stress and disarray. Two Silicon Valley billionaires are launching a new initiative to reinvent the party. Zynga founder Mark Pincus and LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman announcing when the future, the so-called first people's lobby, invites Twitter users to vote on progressive policy ideas like ending gerrymandering and free college education. Joining us this morning on our panel is new leader, senior fellow, and radio host. You will see him on The Five at 9 on the Fox News Channel, Richard Fowler, along with attorney Christy Kunzig. Christy, what is your take on this new initiative? Because, again, the money has already been pouring in from Silicon Valley to liberal causes, to the, de uh, to the DNC, to the Democratic Party, but it, does this take it a step further? I think it's good that they're realizing that changes do need to be made. I don't necessarily think that these are essentially the right changes, but I think it's somewhat of a step in the right direction because they're saying, okay, you know, we need to wake up and actually listen to what people want, and, and we haven't been doing that. Let's give that a shot. Yeah. Richard, do you think it'll work? I mean, do well, I, where do, what does it do? How does it move the ball forward? Well, I think we'll have to see, right? But I think as we go into 2018, as we're gonna, what Democrats are going to have to do, Dagan, is they're going to have to localize a lot of these races. And when you think about the local issues, gerrymandering is one of them, and that every voter gets one vote, and we don't have these crazy drawn, you know, sh you know, seahorse districts that we're dealing with right now. And that is a place where I think you can get millennials engaged because that has real impact on how tax dollars are spent uh, on a regular basis and, and, and at home, and, schools, and, hospitals. And, and uh -huh. the flair is Harlan have gone up in terms of the Democrat, Democratic losses mm -hmm. in these special elections. Mm -hmm. I mean, look no further than that Georgia election and John Ossoff. But does this money and this effort by these tech billionaires, does it, does it change anything? Hillary Clinton ran one of the most well-funded presidential races in right. history. Um, in that special election in Georgia, he was, it set records, his funding. Throwing money behind this problem doesn't fix it. The Democrats need to articulate an economic message for, for the American people. And so far, they haven't been able to do it. And what we're seeing here is that there has been a hostile takeover of the Democratic Party by billionaires, by tech CEOs. And free education is a handout to them. They, they specifically underscored here engineering degrees, free engineering degrees. That's a handout because they have a, a, a talent problem and they want the federal government to underwrite it. That's what they're asking. I, I don't, I, go ahead, Richard. Let, let, well, two points on this. First, on the, the, the special election in Georgia. Um, if, you think, if you look back at 2008, Barack Obama won all of his special elections and took major losses in the 2010 midterm elections, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, Republicans also spent almost 12 to $13 million maintaining a seat that they <laughs> won in November by 30 points. Uh, and number three on this engineering thing, whether it's a handout to tech companies is irrelevant. If, if, yes. we, could, if, we, if we in America can produce more engineers, we'll be able to compete with the likes of China, Germany, and India who are nipping at our heels when it comes to producing engineers and individuals in the STEM fields where we aren't. So we've got to find a way to make sure that we are competing in the world market, and that means producing more engineers, and that means somehow, some way, whether democratically or republicly, reducing the cost of college. I, uh, Lindsay, but that, that does go to the point of, like, creating, uh, of cr basically training talent for the jobs that need to be filled. It's a huge problem in this country. We're just talking about the jobs report and then the reason the numbers are coming in slower is we need people to fill these jobs we're losing manufacturing jobs and making engineering jobs the economy here is changing so that is a way and I Richard I want to point this out to Hall and this is a way of changing the message on the economy that the de Democrats have been pushing because again in the last election even from Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. it was about the minimum wage yeah. that's not how you get rally millennial voters that's not how you rally people who otherwise might have voted Republican in uh, 2018. Look, I'd love to have free, mean, um, in 2016. I would love to have free college. I'd love to have free health care. I'd love to have all this stuff. But ultimately, we have a, a, a crisis in being able to fund the basic operations of the United States government. And we are, we are running out of deficit that is tremendous. And, and, and so you're, what you're talking about is piling on top of that. But you um, know what the problem no, is? You wait, don't, wait, wait. I'll, I'll, I'll probably say what Richard's going to say. Okay. <laughs> you don't hear, but you know what? In terms of the funding problems, the problem for the Republican Party is you don't hear that from Republicans. Yeah. So the Democrats, the, they've got the ball because yeah. the Republicans aren't. Wor they, they're not worried about the deficit. They're not worried. They're not worried about spending. Mm -hmm. That's actually what you hear from them. Well, look. At this point, I'm looking at the Democratic Party has been promising a lot of free stuff for a long time, and meanwhile, the Democratic Party has become totally irrelevant in terms of governing this country. Over 30 governors' mansions are controlled 
by Republicans. The Republican Party is a half a legislature away from being able to hold a constitutional convention and to be able to run it convincingly. Well, so I, the, well, the Democratic Party has totally collapsed in this country. Well, I would, and and I this has been say, tried before, and it doesn't work. Richard, uh, before well, we move uh, on, uh, I'll give you a final word on this topic. I, I, well, a couple of things. One, I wouldn't say the Democratic Party is collapsing, but Harlan, remember that talking yeah, point when Donald Trump says that Democrats are the obstruct. We're obstructing. If we're the minority party, we can't obstruct this president. He can do whatever the hell he wants to do well, without waiting on Democrats to do it. Well, that, and that's your, that's <laughs> clearly your strategy coming out in, down in D.C. and the House and the Senate.